Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, we are going to be making a pair of gothic door knockers. Now this particular gothic door knocker is going to have a rosette um, detail in it as its main finial or focus point. And I am making an actual pair of them. Now I'm showing one half the process in this video. But actually, as I was filming this, this is for two separate customer orders that I was working on simultaneously. So you got some clips from one and some clips from another. But here we go. So I'm the first step in this process is we're segmenting this piece out. This is going to get drawn down into the actual knocker portion itself once we segregate out both ends because we're going to leave enough room in the middle for a rosette. Hopefully that makes kind of sense. You'll see a little bit later on down the road here. The starting bar stock size for this was one inch by half inch um, thick, or 25 mil by 12.5 mil, if you will, or say 13 mil, depending on what country you're in. And the starting stock length was roughly about six inches in length. So now we're going to draw down each side. That's why we had to segregate out the material. We had to we had to separate the material and create those segregations. So this way we could focus all of our energy on drawing out each arm of this door knocker. It's really important that you do this for your set downs, especially if you're going to do most of the shouldering work and everything down at the anvil and do a lot of your forge work there if you don't have a power hammer. Now, I'll be honest with you, I did this one for camera, but the other one I used the power hammer on. I don't get paid to uh, fool around just hand smithing all day long. I have to make a living at this, so whenever possible you can use mechanical means for a lot of these repetitive, uh, draconian kind of uh, repetitious type work. You, you know, you really, you don't have to waste your body on just drawing out steel to be drawing out steel. There's tools for that. So as you can see in the foreground there, I've got the other one that's been drawn out by the power hammer, and you can see how this one works here. We're going to give it a good stiff brushing and a clean up. And I like to do this in between next stages in my work and let things cool down and have time to rest so we don't end up with stress cracks. We're asking this material to do quite a bit. So while that cools down, we're going to go ahead and draw down a tenon. We're going to create a, another segregation on a piece of half inch square bar or 12.5 mil square bar and about three quarters of an inch to an inch up from the end. And we're actually going to draw this down into a tenon. And you'll see in the next heat here how we're going to do that. We're going to keep working at the edge of the anvil and then rounding this all up. The size of the tenon really doesn't matter, just as long as you size it appropriately to whatever job you want or your specs. In this particular case, I'm trying to keep the piece to about 3 8 of an inch or 3 8 inch diameter, which will later be ground down and then tapped or threaded, if you will, to about 5 16 So it'll be like a 5 16 bolt. Now, I won't be showing the threading or the tapping process, as that's a little bit beyond the scope of just the forging deal. Um, but you can find really good videos online about how to tap and thread things. But the one thing I can tell you on the forging end of it, you want to create nice, smooth, clean, really symmetrically round tenons if you're going to thread them at a later date. So there we go, we just finished rounding this up. Again, taking the time to smooth it up here, 
will really help us out later on when we need to file this round. So in the next heat here, I'm going to cut this piece off. That's the, that'll be the next step. And then I'll go on to actually working on what will eventually become the nut or the decorative nut on the back side of the door. This particular, this particular door knocker is meant to, is a drill through or a throughput door knocker. Um, you know, this will work really well with like old wooden doors. Some of the modern doors will work out well too. Uh, the main critical thing is, is to just keep in mind your overall door thickness. If you're making this for a customer like I was, I had to keep that in mind at all times that I had enough to go through the door and through the nut on the back side to make this whole thing work out. Again, after you cut on a piece that's already got a tenon on the end, that tenon likes to bend a little bit. So before you completely ring this thing off, make sure you straighten up that tenon a little bit, re-square it with the body. break it off and there you go. Now on to the next piece. So for the next piece, for the next piece we're going to basically just cut off about a one inch or just a little over a one inch length piece on the end of this bar probably inch and an eighth or so. You'll see us cut this off. Again, this is like half inch. Um, you can do less, you'll just end up with a smaller nut on the back side, or you can do more. Uh, the option's up to you. The more mass you give it, um, the bigger, chunkier the thing will look. There you have it. We'll ring that off. We'll get it in a fire and get it up to a much higher heat. Now we're going to go ahead and turn this down, turn this up on in, and we're going to flatten it straight down. Right on down we go. We're trying to work this out into what will eventually become the door nut on the back side. Now there is a little bit of a trick here. You do have to have enough mass that you can actually catch some threads. So be real careful when you're doing this. Um, if you don't have enough mass when you cut off the piece and it's not thick enough in the final dimensions, you won't be able to actually catch any threads and so therefore it won't work and it'll let your door knocker fall off. So as you can see all the little parts all laid out here. Got some, uh, I got multiple door bolts and multiple nuts there hang everything from. So after everything got cooled down and annealed a little bit, we're going to actually work on um, hammering this up. We're just going to use a little ball punch. Now this is about a 3 8 inch in diameter ball punch. Tong held, of course. Any piece of mild steel that you ground a ball on the end of it or a little radius on the end of it will work out just fine. It doesn't have to be tool steel specifically. So for this first stage, we're really what we're looking for is to basically have this thing uh, kind of laid out. And we're going to deepen everything on the next heat. So this next heat here, here we are, we're going to deepen things. And you'll start seeing me actually tilt the punch more out. What this does is this gives the individual petals of the rosette a lot more flare. 
little pro tip there for you. Now some of you may be asking, Roy, why wouldn't you just put that in your vise and do that? And the simple answer is, is we need this to flow out, this material to flow out into negative space. So this way you get a nice bulgy kind of petally look to it. If you trapped it in a vise, chances are what you're going to get is you're going to get a lot of marring on the piece and it's not going to hold it that well. Give it a good brushing after you're done forging to just kind of clean it up there a little bit and make sure you don't have any bad hammer marks. All right, so now we're working on the actual door bolts that is going to be the knocking portion. Now this bolt is just the place that the actual knocker is going to hammer against. So it's going to get flattened out as what you're seeing here, just like the other one. And then it's going to have, um, we are going to go ahead and do the same ball punch and rosette technique on it as well. We'll lay it out colder with the remainder of our heat, and then we will turn around and get it hot again and sink all those grooves a lot deeper. I made two basically the same things, tenons, two basically tenoned pieces the same way. One was about an inch and the other one was about an inch and a quarter long and they were for two separate purposes. The one that was an inch long was there for basically doing this door bolt right here, the part that you'll actually knock against. The other one that is an inch and a quarter long is actually the clevis, and that's the part that the door knocker hangs from. And so leaving extra mass there, I was able to get a little thicker in dimension. And you'll see how that'll play out in the long run and why that was necessary. So now while that cools down, um, again, switching up tactics a little bit, keeping it interesting. I'm going to draw down the tenons that will eventually be fitted so this way it will go through um, the actual clevis that it will be hanging from. And we're starting by creating a tenon on the end and then going just behind that tenon by about 3 eighths of an inch or 9.5 mil and we're going to be driving down the material there behind it to kind of create a collar. And it's a little bit of like a faux collar if you will. It's not truly a collar. A collar would be something that you would weld on. Um, this is just forged into the piece to give the appearance of a collar. And what that does is that actually gives us a nice transition of line and a good place for our knocker to stop and our clevis to begin. So now we'll draw a taper behind that part. Being very careful, by the way, I might add, not to hit, <laughs> not to hit that faux collar of ours. And now we'll draw down the piece all the way into that taper that we established and round it all up. Now, as an added, you don't have to round this up. You could actually leave it uh, octagon and that would be a neat look as well, as long as your octagon facets match on both sides of the door knocker. And again, give it a good brushing to clean it up and let it rest at the end of your heats. So now back over, and this is will be actually the clevis bolt that we're working on. As you can see, it's a lot taller because I need a lot more mass because I'm going to put a hole in the center of this and this is what it's actually going to swing from. We will also work on this piece of basically what we're going to do is we're going to chase in some lines to it, a uh, nice chasing like a rope, like a center bar rope. But I'm not actually going to rope it this time. We're just going to create it to make it look like a collar on the outside. Again, this is a lot of faux collar work. This is pretty common in Gothic 
um, French Baroque um, type ironwork, if you will, Scandinavian ironwork. Uh, you'll see this quite often. A lot of Austrian stuff, and now nowadays, since Russia is going through a renaissance with this type of ironwork, there's a lot of Russian smiths out there doing very similar things. But again, like with all blacksmithing, nothing new is under the sun. Um, this has been done for many and many and many a centuries. One thing I'd like to point out here, if you're a beginner and you're wanting to try some advanced level projects like this one here, uh, don't be afraid not to try. You know, you can at least try something like this. If it doesn't come out like mine, remember, I've got about 12 more years of experience than you do. But the only way that I've gotten to the point where I'm at now is by trying more and more complex things that I didn't think I could do myself. So again, if you're just beginning, give this a go. Maybe try a little simpler. Maybe not add as many details. Or stick to a few things. Add some details that you feel maybe you might be comfortable with. And try each component at itself as a standalone thing. You really won't be sorry if you do. So now we're going to add in the center roping on this clevis portion. I'm going to be using a handheld swedge tool like you see here and I'm going to go ahead and hammer on this. Now I was trying to set this up in a comfortable position where the camera could see it and that was a bad move on my part because I ended up getting this off to one side so I had to totally remake these bolts after the filming of this portion here. So full disclosure there, the bolts that are hanging the door knocker are not the bolts that I was working on. Uh, in that thing, but I still wanted to show that process because it's valid. So next up, we will continue on with our ball fuller, our little 3 8 ball fuller here, and we will make our rosette on the actual knocker portion. So you can see how I've taken one theme of one element and continued that through the entire piece and the entire project. I've changed up a few things, but the main theme of this is to be a rosette door knocker. So you can see with some pretty simple tools, you can just constantly add these type of details into your work. And then your work becomes very visually complex because you're layering one element at a time. And that's really been a big key factor in my forging practice. Uh, you know, being here at, you know, getting to this point in my career is layering elements, one forging element right after the other on top of it to end up creating a process, uh, create a whole project um, with some really simple projects and very simple tooling. So now we're going to use a eyeball punch for the center of this rosette versus a depression or just a, cin a center ball punch in the center. Um, the eyeball punch allows the center stamens area to stay um, kind of proud of the surface a bit, which makes it nice and gives it a nice contrast between the depressions from the ball fuller. Keep hammering that up nicely. And then in the next heat, we're going to go ahead and straighten this thing out. Because it always gets a little wonky once you do that. So I'm using a wooden block that I got from Cincinnati Forge and Tool Co. If I can, I'll put a link to that down in the description down below. And I'm using a rawhide mallet that was given to me by a subscriber to straighten that up. Now here I'm using a fancy little hook bending jig. You really don't have to use a jig like this. You could use, you could just bend this around the horn of an anvil, or you could actually use a, um, you know, a pair of bending forks and do just as good of a job. Now I was actually making two of these at this time, so I needed both of them to be exactly alike. So I was taking and using a jig 
for that purpose. So once you've got the arms bent and a gap in between them, now we hang the clevis from the arms and we tap them together. And what this will do is this will actually close that onto the clevis and allow it to hang there freely. So we do all of our final fit up and adjustment right here at the end. Now I've already done all the threading. You can see the nut onto it right there. And uh, so all that's done. So now after this portion, really the only thing that's left is to give this a good blacksmith finish with some boiled linseed oil uh, to turn it all nice and black and then ship it off to the customer. So that's it for this video. Thank you to all my channel members who have made traditional content like this possible. Thank you all for all of your support. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that bell for all notifications. Um, and if you want to take and support content, great content like this, consider becoming a channel member. So that's it for today. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.